Hello, everyone. You're welcome to class. I think this is the fifth class of the Linux Bootcamp. And uh, today we're going to be looking, we're still going to be looking at file permissions. In our last class, when we started the uh, permissions for files, we look at the four parts to file permissions. The first part we said tells you the type of uh, file you have. Is it a folder, which is also called directory or a file, okay? And remember we said, if you list the content of a folder in details, ls flag l, which is an alias for ll, okay? We will notice that the ones that have d, these are directory, so these are folders. The ones that have D, okay? Why the one that does not have a D are files, okay? They could be text file, they could be script file, they could be uh, a compressed or tad file, right? And that's the first uh, part of the four parts to a file permission. The other three parts are in three bits, okay? And they tell you the specific uh, access that an identity have over a file or a directory. Let's take this purple folder, for instance. Remember in our last class, we said this column is for user why this column is for group. And then there is the third column for other, right? Now on this permission, they are in, they are grouped into three bits. Read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read and execute, okay? The first set of grouping root that execute is for the user the second set is for group while the third set is for other okay who are others they are users that are not member of this group neither it is not the user that is listed or displayed here that is where you will find others Okay, uh, if I look at, let me list, to know all the users available on a Linux system, I will run the command get entry password. So on this system, I know there is a user called monkey. Is a user called Cletus. Is a user called Apache. Apache. Is a user called EC2 user. All right. As far as this Cletus and Monkey users are concerned, if neither of them is a member of this group, and they're obviously not the one here, the user here is EC2 user. Then, as far as this violet order is concerned, the identity is under others. Okay, the identity is under others. Okay, let's look at payroll.txt. If clear tools and the monkey users are not member of this HR group. And neither or monkey is here. This is easy to user. As far as this is concerned, the identity of Piro, uh, monkey and clear tools, the identity is others. They belong to others. Okay. And if we look at it here, others do not have any permission granted to them concerning this period.txt. For purple, Others have read and execute only. For red, others have read and execute only. 
okay, for orange.txt, all that have read only permission. So we know what this uh, represents. Okay, so let's uh, clear and move on. So we were able to look at how we can set permissions in our last class. We say, look at the apple.txt file. Let's say I want to give write permission to the group and others. The command will look like change modification, G mode, group others, G for group, O for others, plus write permission, the name of the file, apple.txt. Okay, it says operation not permitted. Why? Because this file belongs to Cletus user and members of monkey group. And the person trying to, the user trying to change the modification of this file is EC2 user. That's why permission is not, wasn't granted, okay? Either I change the ownership of this file to EC2 user, or I use sudo with this command. Now remember that when you use sudo, it means it is root that owns the process. Okay, so you will see now that app.txt, the group and others now have write permissions. Here, they do not have write permission. They only have read permission for apple.txt, okay? I can return that to what it was. Let's clear screen. We see that it is back to what it was, okay? So what if I now want to use number to execute that? It's going to be cheat mode. Read write is four plus two, six. Okay, that's the current one for this. The one we are going to, we want to give it read write, it's going to be six as well. And then for this read write, it's also going to be six, followed by the name. Again, it's going to deny us until we use sudo. And if I list, so we see that they are now Group and others now have write permission over apple.txt. Okay, so we've been able to see how we can modify permission using the classic method and using the numeric method. Okay. okay. A very quick uh, example. Let's say we want to change the permission of etsy.back. We want to change the permission of etsy.back using numerical value for user read write execute, other read write execute, and group read write execute. Okay. We want to give the permission for user group orders, read, write, and execute. How will it look like? So maybe chi mode. Read, write, execute is 777. Yeah. Read, write, execute for user, for group, and then for others. Then the name of the file. Okay, this one didn't tell us permission denied and we didn't use sudo because the file we are modifying its permission is owned by EC2 user, this user here. Okay, so if I list now, we now see that the etsy.back folder is now a publicly listed.
Buddha. All right. So let's uh, go into ownership. Ownership. If you look at Apple.txt file, you will notice that the file is not owned by the current signed in user. The file is owned by Kletus. And the group that can access the file is called Monkey. Okay. What happened there was we changed the ownership and the group access of the file, which we're going to do now. Okay. So let's say we want to return apple.txt ownership to ec to user. That means we want to change the ownership. The command is going to be sudo chun. Chun means change ownership. Okay. The name of the new owner ec to The name of the new user and the name of the file. If I list, you will notice that the owner here was Cletus and now the owner is EC2 user. I can also change group owner as well. The same command, but this tune will now become change group. G R P. Okay. EC2 user and that. And if I list, you now see that this so when we look at it properly, we now see that this app.txt is now owned by EC2 user and this. Okay, let's try that with a file, the payroll file. Let's change ownership to clear to. So we say sudo change ownership, the name of the new owner. Let's use the name of the file payroll. All right, if we list. Letters. Can change the group as well. I think we have marketing group. Let's change the group now to marketing group. So we say sudo change group marketing payroll. And if we list, payroll is now owned by Cletus. And then members of marketing group can also have access to payroll, okay? But what if I want to change both in one line of command? I don't want to change ownership and then later return to change group. I just want to change both in a single line of command. Let's look at purple directory. If I'm going to change purple directory owner to Cletus, and change the group access to uh, let's say monkey primary group. The command will become sudo tune flag capital R the name of the new user Cletus Colum the name of the group I want to add it to member of the monkey primary group in the name of the folder. So if I list a purple user owner has been modified, so also is. Right. Any question? What do you say? 
when it's marketing, you were alighting. It has changed. The purple has actually changed the ownership. Yes. Ownership and also the group. The group. You know, initially, I showed us how to change it one by one. Change ownership. Yes. We just change the ownership, the owner, the user. I just want to change the group. But if you want to mm. do, you want to change for both in a single line. Mm. You use sudo chun flag apita r, then the user, the user that we own it and the group mm. it belongs to. Exactly. So here now, what did you do? Change the owner and then change the groups, the group that have access as well. So that's it. We have changed uh, both. Any question? No question for now. It's All actually right. self-explanatory. One just have to pay Francis. more attention to understand the this is most most scripts. Um, practice, practice, practice. All right. So, moving on, let us look at um on true access list, F-A-C-L, okay, F-A-C-L, file access control list, FACO, okay, that's clear. If you want to get all if you want to see the details, the kind of permission on a file, and if there are co-owners of a file or co-group access to a file, the command will be get FACL, get file access control list for this directory, let's see dot back so for this directory etsy dot back we see that the file name is this the owner is ec2 user which is this the group that have access to it is ec2 user permission of user is read write execute look at it here permission of the group Read write execute permission of others read write execute. Okay. Can we intentionally change that? Let's see. Uh G mode six five four etc dot back. If we list, it has changed to read write, read execute, read only. So if we now run get FACL, get FACL at the back, we see that read write is what we have here, read write for user, for group. For group, read and execute, read and execute. For others, read only, read only. Okay, that's how to get the file access control list of any file. Even for folders as well. Let's try get FACA for violet. Okay, so for this folder, the owner is CC2 user, the group is CC2 user group. And then user read write execute. Then read write execute. Then read and execute, which is what we have here. Okay. 
you want to know more about get FACL, run the command MAN meaning manual, then get FACL. It tells you get file access control list, displays the file name, the owner, the group, and all of that. Okay. Group. Okay. What are two extensions? If you add flag A, it will display the access control list. If you add flag D, it should display, display the default access control list. If you if you use flag C, do not display the comment header. Flag E print all effective right comments, even if identify all of this. Okay. So apart from using it to get file access control list. We can also use FACO to make a user co-own a file or a folder. This etsy.back folder is owned by EC2 user. I can also set Cletus as a co-owner of this file. Okay, instead of actually displacing EC2 user, I can decide to say, okay, I'm going to make EC2 user a co-owner, all right? And how is that done? Let me show you quickly before proceed. We say sudo set this time it will not be get again, set FACL, meaning set file access control list, flag M, meaning make M for make. You want to do for users first, it's going to be you for user, colon, the name of the user, clear to, okay, colon, what permission do we want clear to, to have, what are file or folder? Let's give Cletus read, write, execute permission, followed by the phone, the file, or the folder. Okay. And that's it. Set file access control list, flag make user, Cletus user, and give Cletus read, write, execute permission over the folder. So right now, we have made clear to a co-owner of this is etc.back folder. So if I list now, you now see that this folder now have plus here. Plus meaning that there are additional permissions beyond what you are seeing in this place. So if I run get facl for etc.back, you will now see the original owner is EC2 user. However, there are other users that also own it, which is Cletus. And this is the permission Cletus have read, write, execute. Okay. It's still one group. We're not, we're not done for group. Okay. And we go to for group as well. It's still the same command. But this time, you will now become what? What did you say we use to represent you? Sorry. Yeah, to represent group. What do we use to represent group? The other one was you for user. But this time for group, what do we use to represent group? Which of the alphabets? G. Right. G. Then the name of the group. We have a group mm -hmm. called marketing. For permission, let's give it good and right only. And tap enter. If you list, you're still going to see just the 
plus. Okay, but if you run get FACL black, it now tells you that there is another group that also have access to the etsy.pack folder. And that group is marketing. Read and write permission. Okay, so with set faculty, set file access control list, we can give co access to users, to group, to others, as far as the folder is concerned. Let's clear and do it again. Practice, they say, leads to perfection. Look at the purple folder, which the original, the current owner is a uh, Cletus. Can we add a city user as a co-owner? What do we do? We say sudo get not get set FACL, set file access control list, plug M, make, then U for user, the name of the, sorry, lowercase U, the name of the user is C2, is C2 user, okay. Followed by permission, let's give it read and uh, write and execute the name of the file, purple. So if I list, you see now also have a plus sign here. And then if I run get FACL purple, now tells us there's also a C2 user that co own the purple folder. You can do the same for group. The U becomes G. The name of the group, let's use the primary group of EC2 user and let's give it through an execute permission. And if I run get FACL purple, this time around, there's also now a co group. Okay. Any question? No question for me. All right. If there are no questions, let us remove these. accesses let's start with this if we want to remove for group what is changing here is two things can you hear me Hello? Can you hear me? I think the network is scrambled. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Okay, and network is seems like it is gone.
Hi everyone, welcome back from the brief I had to. I sincerely cannot explain what happened. I think uh, my Emirates was trying to auto update. So let's quickly get into class. Okay, so what were we looking at? We wanted to, we've set file access control list, get FACL, OPPO. Okay, now I want to show us how to remove this file access control list. Okay, so if you look at POPU folder here, you will notice that the plus icon means there are other permissions not shown here. Okay, which you can see when you run the command, get file access control list, followed by the name of the file or folder. Okay, so if you look at it here, you will see that apart from the owner that has read write execute permission, we also have another user that is co-owning it, EC2 user. And it also has this permission. We also have another group, apart from the uh, the main group. We also have another group, which is what? EC2 user, which has read execute permission on this purple. So I'm saying, let's say we want to remove, we want to remove uh, the user and the group that we just added. The command is still set FACL. Instead of flag M, which is to make, this time it's gonna be flag X, which is to uh, remove, okay? Start with user, in lower case, followed by the name of the user, EC2 user, okay? We would have put the permission, but of what use is the permission if you're removing the user from having all access, either as owner or a group, either as primary group. There's no need. So we just do is flag X, user is it to user the name of the file or if it is a folder. Okay. Says permission no granted. We know why. Because Popu is currently owned by Kletus, and these are trying to run that process is another user. So we use sudo. And now if we list, we won't see it here anyway. What we should have done is get FACL Popu. Popu. So you see the user is gone. You can do the same for group. Okay, flag X, G, U changes to G. The name of the group we want to remove is it's also EC2 user. That means it's the primary group. We remove the EC2 user group as well. And if we also run get FACL for purple, you will see that for users, the additional user is gone. The additional group is also gone as well. Okay. So that's how we set file access control list for user, for group, and how we also remove the file access control list, okay? So in this class, we've looked at two things today, how to change ownership and how to change group access, how to do it individually and how to do it as uh, together in a command, okay? And it is the same thing it is the same command irrespective of where you're doing it from. Let's go and use, let's go and do it on a Linux distro under the Debian uh, package manager, which is Ubuntu. If we list, get it, let's see which, what users do we have here? Okay, we have Ola and we have coach users here, good. Now let's list. 
can we change the ownership of violet folder to hola it's going to be sudo tune change ownership the name of the new user hola the name of the folder or violet and if we list you see that violet is now owned by hola can we also change the group that have access to violet can we see all the groups we have here get them group okay we do not have the, this group are primary group of their respective users i want us to create a group which is not a primary group to any user so what's the command to create a group anybody remember group add the name of the group let's say sales you have to use sudo with it so if i run get entry group we now have a group called sales beautiful so can we now change the group that have access to violet to sales it's still the same command but the tune will now change to change group so we we'll do something like sudo instead of tune it will now be change group grp the name of the new group sales the name of the folder or file so if we list you now see that ola is now the new user that owns violet and sales is the group that have access to violet ola user have read write execute permission sales group have read write execute permission and others have read and execute permission okay but what if we want to change it in one line of command without having to first do for user then do for uh, a group separately we run the command sudo tune flag capital r the name of the user coach column the name of the group ubuntu group okay then the name of the file or the folder palette and if i run it if i check it you now see coach is now coach user is now the owner the ubuntu group now have access so we shared with us earlier that this command we do it together you will use this command a lot when you are doing installation and configuration when we get into DevOps, especially with Tomcat, if we use it with Maven, we're going to use it with, uh, what's the name of this? Suna Cube, which is for our static code review. That's when we get into DevOps properly. Okay. So we've looked at that, changing ownership and the group. We've also looked at file access control list. Okay. I think we should take a break now. When we return from our break, we'll come and look at packages. Okay. How to do some package installation and how to uninstall and how to check if a package has been installed or if a package exists, how to start. Okay. And how to do it on different distros of Linux, depending on the package manager it belongs to, right? So let's take 15 minutes now. Sorry, 10 minutes. 10 minutes break, please. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're here. All right. So we're going to be looking at very well. We're going to be looking at the uh, package installation. Now, remember, we said that there are two major package managers for Linux operating system. There are many of them, but 
two are the major recognized ones. First one, Red Hat Package Manager and the Debian Package Manager. There are distros of Linux that are under RPM, and there are also distros of Linux that are under Debian Package Manager. And how you do installation on this package manager distros is different from one PM to another. However, the first thing we need to, con to learn is how do we confirm if a particular package or a particular application is available on a system? Let us begin with Amazon Linux, which is a distro under Red Hat. If you want to confirm if a package or an app exists under on this system, the command is simple, which is RPM, Red Hat Package Manager, flag query or QA, query or, okay, then pipe and grab for the name of the package. Let's say we are looking for a package like, uh, uh, let's say, Python. Pipe and grab for Python. Okay. Returning this shows all the Python packages you have on this system. Okay. Let's look for JIT to confirm if JIT is installed on this system. From here, it doesn't look like JIT is installed because what you are seeing here is only showing you where JIT appears. Okay, JIT is not really installed. And now do I know if I install JIT now, you're going to see it. Okay? So that is how to do it on Red Hat Package Manager distros. Let's look for others. Let's look for FTP, File Transfer Protocol. You return nothing, meaning that there's nothing like FTP. What of a network time protocol? Nothing like that. What's of uh, HTTPD? There's no HTTPD here. These ones are just words that have each file that have HTTPD inside. So it was the command to confirm if a package exists on uh, on a Linux distro that is under Red Hat. Look at the command there. RPM, Red Hat Package Manager, flag query or Hype and grip for this. Okay. So if you've been following how I've been explaining the way to use this pipe command, it means that list all the packages in RPM. That is what query all means. But I don't want to see all perform this guy on the output of this command. That's how to use pipe. Two commands, one on the left, one on the right. And it means perform the command on the right, on the output of the command on the left. It is different when you use double ampersand. When you use double ampersand to combine two commands, it means that I don't want to enter the command twice. So run the first command and run the second command. Okay. It's not the same with pipe, where pipe says, run the second command on the output of the first command, okay? Let's go to Ubuntu, which is a distro of Linux under Debian. So how do you confirm a package exists here? The command is Debian package, DPKG, flag list, but I don't want to see all, so I'm going to say pipe and grab for me the name of the package. Let's say Apache 2. 
it's not Apache 2 here, so it returned nothing. What of a uh, Python? No, that's not correct. Python. You see all the Python that you have. Okay. What of uh, FTP, file transfer protocol? We have FTP. What of uh, NTP, network time protocol? Oh, sorry. It should be NTP. There's no NTP. Okay. If I run DPKG flag L, you see that it listed all the packages on this place for me. And we have one to 34 lines. Okay. Two to 35. 3 to 36, 4, you see all of that. That's why I have to use pipe and grip. Okay. That's clear. So we've seen how to list, how to check if the package exists. There are other ways we can use to confirm. Okay. Let's say we have installed Apache 2 here. I want to confirm if Apache 2 is running or not. I can say sudo systemctl status of Apache 2. It could not be found. What that means is there is no Apache 2 on this system. Now let us install Apache 2. Apache 2 is the web server it is is a web server for Linux, just as you have IIS in uh, Windows. So if I want to turn this Ubuntu server into a website, I'm going to install an application called Apache 2 or Engines. There are many of them. The popular ones are Apache 2, which is also called HTTP or Engines. Let's install Apache 2. Now, how do you install how do you install packages on Linux distro that is under Debian package manager? This is it, sudo apt. Either you use apt or you use apt-get, okay? Sudo apt or apt-get, I like to use apt. Install the name of the package Apache 2. You tap enter and now it's installing and it is asking you do you want to continue? I will answer why. Okay. Unable to fetch some activities, maybe run apps get so it could not install. When you have issues like this, what you do is just update the server first. So let's go and update the server. How do you update a Linux server that is under Debian package manager? The command is sudo apt update. What this one will do is to fetch the available updates for you sudo apt update it will fetch the available updates for you and tell you these are the services and packages you can upgrade on this pc see it says 44 packages can be upgraded so to now upgrade these 44 packages you now have to run sudo apt upgrade okay it will ask you do you want to continue you answer why and now the upgrade has started so for linux distros that are under debian package manager please pay attention everyone can you hear me hello everyone are we together yes we are together yes yes all right. We lost you a bit, but you are back. Okay. 
So I'm saying for Linux, distros that are under Debian package manager. If you want to update those kind of distros, the command is two. The first one is sudo apt update. When that one has fetched all the available packages that can be upgraded, you will now run sudo apt upgrade. Okay. Now, these are two commands which you can combine in just one line of command. And that is to use sudo apt update, update double upgrade. ampersand sudo apt upgrade. So meaning that run this command when you are done run this command don't mess it together it's not the same as when i use pile okay both we allow you put upfront pipe and double ampersand we allow you to run two linux commands together but in different sequence this one does not have any sequence other than run the first one when you are done run the second one here, I'm just saying, I don't have time to run this thing twice. Run this first one when you are done, run this second one. Okay? And ensure that the command is complete. What I mean by complete is, try the first one. Ensure you enter complete command here that will not require you any input. Okay? Because this is how we do it when we are doing bash scripting. But the one that uses this pipe operand, this one is saying that run this first one and pause. Then run this second one on the output of this command. So they are different. However, what we are using for this is this double operand, sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Now you will notice that at some point I was asked to answer yes or no, right? So if I do not want to Waste time, I'll just put flag Y here. Flag Y means that wherever you require me to answer yes or no, select yes. That's what flag Y means. Okay. So that's how to update Linux distros that are under Debian package manager. Okay. For Linux distros that are under Amazon, sorry, that are under RPM, it's just straightforward. Sudo, it will not be apt this time. It's going to be yum. Sudo yum update flag y. That's all. You don't have to upgrade here. As long as that Linux is under is a Linux distro under Red Hat, like uh, Red Hat itself, like Amazon Linux, like uh, CentOS, like Fedora. Okay, the installer word is yum, not apt. Okay, I don't need to upgrade it. This one will do a full update of the server for you if there is any. It says blue packages, mark for the terminals. The system is up to date. Okay, so this one has a problem. And the problem is there is a process using what we are supposed to use to upgrade our server TPKG. And this is the process ID 1462. And I think I've taught us that when there are issues like this, what do we do? We either wait it out or we kill this process. Right? So let's kill this process. What's the command to kill the process? I shared with you one of the classes. Sudo Q flag nine. 
followed by the process ID 1462. Okay. That has killed the process. I killed it once. And then I tried to kill again. And see what it said. No such process. That's because this command has already killed it. Okay. So let's try and upgrade ours. Beautiful. So we've done successful upgrade. Can we clear screen? So how to update on Debian package manager is different from how to update on Red Hat package manager. Take note of how to check if uh, a package is available on Debian package manager is different from how to do it. If it is available, check if it's available on Red Hat. Okay. What are that difference? Let's go and install. Can we install uh can we install Apache 2 here? Sudo apt install Apache 2 flag Y. What did we say this flag Y will do for us? Anybody remember? Mark yes. Anywhere you request to install, say yes. Beautiful. So answer yes wherever you need me to select yes or no. That's the flag Y. Okay. Tap enter. Okay. Tap enter. And that is it. It's installed. So if I run sudo, if I want to check the status of the package I just installed now, Apache 2. I'll say sudo system ctl system control status of which file of which package rather apache 2 you see the other time we ran this package this command it showed us nothing it says that it does not exist but now that we installed it successfully it now says active and what and running Okay, this Apache 2 uses port 80. So if port 80 on the firewall of our server is opened, I should be able to browse for this my server. Let's go to the server. Look at it. It is Ubuntu. I click on the instance ID. I'll check on security. How did I get here? Let me return to dashboard again so you can see. Okay, click on the instances that are running. Ubuntu, click on the instance ID. Scroll down to security. Okay, on the security, I have many ports, but on your own, it's likely that you only have 22. Okay, so I want you to add additional port, which is port 80. And how do you do that? Click on the security group name here. When you, do, when you do that, it takes you to the security group and click on edit inbound rules. Is doctor still in class? Oh, she has gone. So when you click on edit inbound rules, it brings you here. Let's say I do not have port 80. Where is it? Let me remove it. Look at it. Delete this. And I want to add port 80 as a rule, HTTP. I'll click on add rule. This custom TCP, I'll drop it down. And I'm looking for HTTP. Look at HTTP. HTTP is on port 80. So if I click this, it automatically selects port 80 here. 
and then the source is going to be from anywhere. So you either drop down this and select anywhere IP version 4, then it will automatically populate this as anywhere. Okay, when we get into the BS, we we'll expand it on this. The next thing is you save group. So I've added, I've opened port 80 on the firewall of my server. So if I return to instances, this is Ubuntu. And I copy the IP address, the public IP address of that server, and I go browse for it. If I browse for it, I should be able to reach that my Ubuntu server. Look at it. Apache 2, all right? So let me post the IP address on the Zoom chat. You guys should also browse for it from your end and tell me what you are seeing. You can use your phone, you can use any of your devices that has internet on it. Browse for it and tell me what is showing you. Is anybody doing that? Anybody browsing for it? Let me know, please. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Are you able to browse? What are you seeing? I said, I don't know why it's, it's not allowing me. It didn't allow you as how? So you can just type it, type the IP address on the chat board. Type it on the chat board, then you can copy it. I... Do you copy that? Okay, I am getting it. You got it. So I want to use chat GPT to write yeah. a simple commercial website. And then we'll change what is on that website to something else. So Wes has been able to browse for the IP address. Just type the public IP address directly on your yeah, I got it. With HTML. So I'm asking ChatGPT to write a simple commercial website with HTML for us. Okay, let's do that. Right, it is done. So let's copy code and let's go to here. Now, if you look at that, it says, if you can read this page, it means that the Apache HTTP server installed at this site is working properly. You should replace this file located at this place. So if you go to this place, you can modify the content of this website by modifying what is inside index.html file. So let's go to this uh, directory. So we say cd root var www html.
can you hear me everyone that's clear yeah. so you say remember how to edit a file edit index.html okay, so all that you are seeing in this place now is what is here this is the back end this is the back end of this simple landing page okay this it works look at it here let me take let me type i i to insert see it here it works okay so what we want to do is we want to remove everything in this place okay Coming, it's taking so so long. I want to take out everything in this page and replace it with our own web. Okay, welcome back, everyone. It's done. I don't want to save. So can we edit this again, this time with sudo? And then let's delete everything and let's paste. So I just pasted our own web server. Okay. The title is going to be my commercial website. Okay, so let's do some modification. Let's change the title to a lucky. All right, and then let's go down. What else? First, adding my commercial. Website. Okay. You can decide to change it to journey. To pick. Okay. I was just another other. Welcome to GTT twenty twenty four. Right, I think that's enough. Let's save right quick bank. Okay. Do you want to refresh your browser? What are you seeing now? Okay. Uh Refresh and let me see. Have you refreshed? Yeah, it's working. Yeah, it works. Is anybody reloading their browser? Yes, yes. It works. I just did my yeah, look at did. the title it here. Works. Ola K. Instead of welcome to our website, we change this one to journey to tech. Welcome to our JTT 2024. I mean, just to show you that the package we installed is the one that will change our server into a web server. If I install a time package, it can change the server to a time server. If I install a DNS package, it can turn the server to a DNS server. Right? So I asked 
chat GPT to write us a simple commercial website, and this is how the website looks. Okay. We're still going to learn more of this when we get into AWS, right? But for now, what are we showing us that brought us here? I'm showing you how to do installation and configuration on the distro of Linux that is under Debian. What, what is different? Apt. Okay. Apt. Now let's go and do the same thing on the distro of Linux that is under Red Hat. Amazon Linux 2 is one of such. So to install that web server application here, the command will be sudo. Instead of apt now, it's going to be yum. Yum. Swiggle yum install. The application that bears Apache 2 on Ubuntu. Here it is bearing HTTPD. And I'm putting flag Y. And that is, that's installed successfully. So if I want to confirm if HTTPD is installed, remember I run RPM, flag query or pipe and grade for HTTPD. See, this is the real one. Again, what can I do? Let me check the status. Sudo systemctl status httpd. It says it is inactive and it is dead. Can we start it? The same command, sudo systemctl start httpd. Okay, let's try restart. Job for HTTPD circuits exited with error system status for details. Okay, so if we are unable to restart, let's go and do the configuration first. The same file we went to on Ubuntu we go to the same file here. Yeah, we say cd root var www html. No such file. If there's no such file, that means our installation is not complete. And we run the command again. sudo yum install httpd flag y. It says we have the latest version of that already. That's good. Then let's go into cd root var rest list. We're supposed to have www here. If our httpd was properly installed, I'm assuming I may have broken this server one way or another. Okay. I'll fix it, but it's going to take me some time. What I can do, which is close to what can help us learn quickly, is to launch another Amazon Linux. But from what I'm seeing, our time is gone. Let's end the class here so I don't load us with too much. I'll leave the server as is. I won't touch it. When we come to class on Thursday, we're going to launch a new server and then we'll complete this package installation. So what did we do when we returned from break? I showed us a bit about packages. First, how to confirm if a package or if a service is existing or running on our Linux server. Okay, how you will confirm if it is a Linux distribution under Debian or if it is a Linux distribution under Red Hat. Okay, 
your challenge or what you might be thinking of currently is so how do I know this is a distro under uh Debian or this is a distro under Red Hat? A simple Google will tell you that. But I can assure you, when you work often with this Linux distros, you will know which one is which. Right? right now, you know from this class that Ubuntu Linux is a distro under Debian. And Amazon Linux is a distro under Red Hat. Red Hat. Debian Linux itself is a distro under Debian. Red Hat Linux itself, R-H-E-L, Red Hat Enterprise Linux itself, is also a distro of Linux under Red Hat. So you know four distros now, and you know which, which uh, package manager they belong to. But even if you don't know, like I said, borrow from your neighbor. It's simple Google uh, check to show you which distro, uh, which package manager a distro belongs to. And once you know the package manager, you now know if you're going to be using YUM or APT. Okay. So when we come to class on Thursday, we'll come and complete package installations. It is now that I can tell you that we are now beginning to scratch what we need to know about Linux gradually. You see all those ones we, we did in uh, class one to four. They are the general things that even secondary school uh, students will know. Things that like creating file, creating folder, what you do effortlessly on your Windows. Yeah. But when it gets into package installations, when we begin to look at SSH networking, when we begin to look at prone jobs, okay? That's when we can now say, okay, we are now beginning to learn the Linux that a typical DevOps engineer should know. And the good thing is I'm here to break it down to as simple as possible to the point that we understand. All you need to do is don't be lazy. Watch your class videos, practice, and write things down as you practice. All the commands we've used today or we've been using so far, expect that you will write them down and you will write how you understand how they work. Okay. All right. Any question before we move the class? Will there be any question? Hello, everyone. Are we good to go? We are good to go and practice. Okay. So that's it. I'll see you on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.